The honor of the first space station belongs to the Soviet Union's Salyut 1, launched in 1971. The station was smaller than the later American Skylab, with a mass at launch of only 20 tons. It measured 15.8 meters in length and contained 90 cubic meters of living and working space, pressurized to 15 psi, that is, approximately Earth's sea level pressure. Soyuz ferries delivered three-man crews and a limited quantity of cargo to a single port at Salyut 1's front end. On May 24, 1972, at a summit meeting in Moscow, U.S. President Richard Nixon and Soviet Premier Alexei Koskin signed the Space Cooperation Agreement, an international treaty that called for a wide range of cooperative ventures in space. One suggestion was an Apollo Command Service Module docking with a Salyut station using an international docking mechanism. Instead, the IDM would be used on the Apollo-Soyuz test project in 1975. The Apollo-Soyuz test mission proved that the U.S. and the Soviet Union could work together in space. NASA realized that after the completion of Apollo, Skylab, and Apollo-Soyuz test project programs, there would still be significant Apollo surplus hardware. This amounted to two Saturn Vs, three Saturn 1B boosters, one Skylab space station, three Apollo Command service modules, and two lunar modules. After consulting with Soviet counterparts, NASA proposed using these assets for a second Skylab station that would launch in 1975 or 1976 and be a joint station with the Soviet Union. A range of options were considered. Saturn V SA-515 would boost the second Skylab station into orbit somewhere between January 1975 and April 1976. It would serve as a space station for Apollo and Soyuz spacecraft in the context of the Apollo-Soyuz test project mission, then be serviced by the space shuttle. Aerospace manufacturer McDonnell Douglas proposed an even more ambitious plan. Achieve a massive station by combining Salyut and Skylab together. This would be achieved by launching an Apollo with a multiple docking port adapter equipped with four docking ports that could connect both stations and allow for the docking of both Soyuz and Apollo simultaneously. The resulting cooperative space laboratory would address world needs and provide identifiable benefits from space, mutual technological benefits, and cost savings. The U.S.-Soviet crew would perform solar, stellar, and Earth observations, communications technology development, and biomedical studies. Perhaps most important for NASA, Skylab Salyut would serve as an evolutionary step between Skylab A and the Space Shuttle that would permit the U.S. Space Agency to keep its spaceflight teams mostly intact during the projected gap in U.S. piloted flights between the Apollo-Soyuz test project in 1975 and the planned first shuttle flight in 1979. This would eventually become International Skylab. The Salyut 4 space station was launched on December 26, 1974, and was placed in an orbit with an apogee of 355 kilometers and a perigee of 343 kilometers, at an orbital inclination of 51.6 degrees.
On September 1st, 1975, Soyuz-20 launched from Bankanur. After two days in a rendezvous orbit, the crew docked with Salyut 4 and prepared the station for docking with the soon to be launched Skylab B. On September 26, 1975, the last Saturn V lifted Skylab B into a 435 kilometer high orbit inclined to 51.6 degrees. That is, at Skylab A's orbital attitude, but at the Soviet Union's preferred orbital inclination. Unlike the first Skylab, the second Skylab had no issues during launch. The micrometeoroid shield was intact and both its solar arrays deployed without issue. Skylab Space Station, now in orbit, coming up on the Honeysuckle Australia tracking station. The main solar panels on the workshop have indeed deployed and had confirmation on the ground from telemetry that this is the case. The solar panels on the telescope mount have deployed normally. Also, the micrometeoroid shield around the workshop has partially deployed. The large wings, the three sections of solar panels on each wing, one on each side of the workshop, generate uh, anywhere from 51 to 125 volts, depending on the sun angle at the time. This uh, power goes through chargers, which in turn keep storage batteries in the workshop built up to supply power throughout the mission, uh, half, half of each orbit approximately is in darkness when 
No power can be generated by the solar panels. The two solar panel wings are deployed out to the side of the workshop and each panel on the wings operates on uh, similar to a scissors action, spring-loaded to extend the panels. The day after the Skylab B launch, September 27, 1975, Expedition 1 launched on a Saturn 1B with three American astronauts on board. Like the Apollo Soyuz test mission, the command service module detached from the docking mechanism still attached to the S-4B and translated around to dock with it just as the Apollo moon missions had with the lunar modules. Only this time the command service module had to dock with the port on the side of the IDM.
After just eight hours in orbit, the crew docked the IDM to the forward port of Skylab. The crew then entered the station and powered up the systems that had yet to be activated. They then prepared for the arrival of Salyut 4. A week after the launch of Expedition 1, in early October 1975, the Soviet Union launched Soyuz 21. Stage separation. Single liquid fueled engine has shut down and dropped away at an altitude of 126 statute miles. Congratulations. And we have confirmation of the uh, spacecraft separation. Soyuz capsule and crew safely in orbit. After two days in orbit, the crew docked with Salyut 4. However, unlike normal Salyut missions, the crew stayed in the Soyuz as the Soviet Mission Control fired Salyut Force thrusters to put it in a rendezvous orbit with Skylab. Then the crew entered the station. As Salyut 4 approached Skylab B, two cosmonauts entered the Soyuz and undocked from Salyut and moved over to dock with the IDM port.
the lone cosmonaut on board the Salyut then piloted it to a docking with the IDM forward port. The Soviet and American crew, now called Joint Expedition 1, worked together on board International Skylab for two months. The three cosmonauts then undocked first in the Soyuz and returned to Earth. A week later, after staying nearly 70 days in orbit, the first U.S. crew to the International Sky Lab returned back to Earth. The next mission would mark continuous occupied operations of International Skylab from there on out. <laughs>